And her memory means so much to me, but if the bills keep coming in like this, I'm not sure my family will be able to handle it. Well, hey, man, you know what they this say. This is too serious. Don't put all your eggs in one casket. Let's just hope she doesn't get egg-zoomed. I'm sorry. Don't ever contact me or my kids ever again. I understand. Anyway, that's all for today. Hey YouTube, welcome back to another History Teacher Acts video. Mr. Terry, as I continue my search for historical knowledge found here on the internet. All right, today's video was chosen by our patrons. They want to see more salmonella. And they chose this week for why the chicken got domesticated. All right, other than chickens are delicious, maybe there's more to it. All right, anyway, so we'll check out what uh, these humans, in the in the words of Diogenes, would uh, would call um, why they got domesticated. Um, if you don't know that joke, go to the Diogenes video, um, and you'll see what you see what we're talking about. All right, the original video link is down below. Be sure to sort Sam, give him the view, like, subscription. Uh, make sure we love his stuff because we want him back. It's been a while since he put out some videos. Maybe he's taking a break. I don't know, but I'm sure if we can keep his videos popular and keep that support coming, maybe maybe even more likely than he comes back. And I know we all want that. All right, if you'd like to join a Patreon, uh, the link is down below. Let's you vote on videos. Um, let's have a little bit more influence on the channel. But thank you for being here regardless. Make sure you sub. I know a lot of you watch and don't necessarily sub. It helps the channel a lot. Give it the like, thumbs up if you want to see more of this stuff. But regardless, thank you for being here and let's go ahead and get started. All right. Tell us about chickens. I'm actually interested in this. You know, chickens is the way they exist. There's no way they could have been a creature that the way that they exist today would have ever survived in the wild. A flightless bird, right? Never work. Has to be heavily, heavily influenced um, by uh, humans. Let's check this out. Hi, kids. The chicken got domestic. Hey kids, whenever I browse this site, I see more and more videos of people talking about things like YouTuber drama, the election, world politics, and it made me Okay, I, I know I'm not like... It's people talking about things like YouTuber... On. I'm not a big YouTuber, and they talk about YouTube drama. What? What? What, what is YouTube drama? Okay. I don't know who that drama, guy is. The election, I know that guy is. Politics, and I don't know who that guy is. And it made me think, hey, maybe I should start covering more relevant, nuanced topics in my videos. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk about chickens. So the story of the chicken begins Asia? a long time ago in Southeast Asia. Right. Now, this area had a ton of bamboo growing all over the place. And the thing about bamboo is it follows a very specific life cycle where once every 50 years or so, every bamboo plant in a given region will blossom at the exact same time. Then shortly... Whoa, why? Every 50 years? Well, how long does a bamboo plant last? As much as other trees generally do, but like every 50 years? Okay, I need a botanist. Can we get a botanist here uh, talk in the comments about why this happens? What the heck? So every bamboo plant in a given region will blossom at the exact same with time. With what? Then shortly after, they litter the whole area with these little seeds known as bamboo rice, or as I call them, bambinos. These pellets get like planted, that. the current bamboo dies out, and the cycle starts over. Now, okay, so they have a 50-year life cycle. At the very end, they just explode out all their DNA, I guess, and uh, it's born. And that thing is going to be edible? Let's get planted, the current bamboo dies out, and the cycle starts over. Now, enter the ancestor of the domesticated chicken, known as the red jungle fowl. The jungle fowl lived in Ooh. the same area. Okay, why did we get out of, why did we get away from that? I'll, like, you want a jungle fowl sandwich, not a chicken sandwich. Jungle fowl sandwich. As the bamboo, and as you can imagine, they got a lot of benefit out of being literally knee deep in food once every half century. Be so easy, much yeah. so that evolution basically said, All right, uh, the food supplies go DNA. up. I want you to just start pumping out babies like there's no tomorrow. That way, we can take as much advantage of each bloom as possible. As a result, sure. So, I mean, we talk about this in like my history classes, of course. Um, and I, I, it happens with the animal kingdom too. An increase of food supply will always mean an increase in population. It just, it's what happens. Um, when, when more animals can, more animals, humans, whatever can, um, eat more, they're healthier. And specifically if there's an abundance of food, what it means is that there's a uh, much, much reduced risk of famine, which historically speaking is kind of one of the leading causes of, of, of death is, is famine because of how fragile 
really agriculture can be, and this isn't even necessarily agriculture because it's not intentional, but um, how fragile uh, um, food supplies are, right? Especially in, in, in older times. So more food equals more people in the same case is happening here. Especially if it's easily obtainable by a lot of different animals. If chickens, you know, I'm, I'm assuming had more of a, a, a an ability to be able to protect themselves and, and stuff like that than the modern version, which would just get eaten up in, in the wild. Um, but still maybe not nearly as a, a an animal with as, as many survival skills as other kind of wild animals. But if they can eat as well um, and not be, you know, basically pushed into extinction, then yeah, you're going to have an explosion here. So, okay. But like they're saying here, though, there's obviously a cycle because 50 years is a long time. And I don't know, again, what they mean by all of them at the same time, just because that's how it started that way. You'd think it would be it wouldn't be so far apart. Um, cause then I guess you'd be saying that the, the, the bamboo all started at the same time. Therefore it ended at the same time. Don't know how that works. So the chicken population became synchronized with the bamboo shooting up during blooms and dwindling in between. Then Makes humans sense. showed up and they saw this pattern and they said, wow, how bamboozling. And then they realized, wait a minute, that pun was dumb. But also, we can harness this whole chicken cycle thing. All we have to do is give these guys a whole bunch of food, and we can make their reproductive systems go into overdrive whenever oh, yeah. we want. Do you know what that means? Lots of hot bird porn. No, it means we get as many eggs as we could ever dream of. So, with a bit of work, we managed to no. domesticate the chicken around 5,000 BC. And as you can imagine, the idea... Yes, I love that they, they, they got little, they got little, little leashes machine around the house was extremely popular, leading to the chicken spreading across the entirety of the civilized yeah. world over the course of a few millennia. I think it's interesting that, despite the fact that the West has had chickens for most of its history, it wasn't until way later that we figured out where they came from. Like Let me get your history lesson, though, of course. You know, animals in in uh, Eurasia, okay, and, and we should add um, Africa into this. Because the geography is such where the 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 latitude the prime latitude right of, of of society especially in ancient times is around oh 20 degrees north or so basically this line if you can see my mouse cutting through here china indus valley civilization mesopotamia china all basically developed um in a very similar latitude and what that means is that there are going to be similar shared climates uh similar uh shared uh season lengths because because they're on the same latitude so equal amount of sunlight through the year what that means is more than anywhere else in the world as opposed to like the americas food and animals can uh can can thrive in a huge uh territory right um because again a, 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 an animal that's going to live pretty well in much of china might do very well in northern india um much more than moving north to south so you see a lot more east to west movement of animals and plants than you do north south because when you go north south you're changing latitudes and climates vary a lot more north south than they do east west that's why like the americas you don't see this huge sharing of different uh, plants and animals not one just one because there's not a lot native to there but because the climates vary a lot more so a chicken you know especially if it's going to be very productive is going to easily be able to be spread to europe um uh, western asia and africa the civilized world over the course of a few millennia i think it's interesting that despite the fact that the west has had chickens for most of its history it wasn't until way later that we figured out where they came from like all right man yeah it's time to delve into the world of the unknown we're going to see things the likes of which man has never laid eyes upon before. I put, okay, sorry, the bar down there is, you can still see it. I put too way, I put way too much effort into this background for some reason. So you effers better appreciate it. <laughs> do you guys appreciate it? I hope you do. Cause I mean, yeah, for, for Sam, you know, he doesn't, he, he doesn't have the deep art styles. It's pretty, it's pretty simple stuff. That's not why we come here, but I mean, yeah, this is, this is highbrow stuff. Hi, this is high. But if you keep talent. your wits about you. We just might make it out of here alive. Hey, uh, is this this yours? No. Weird. What the hell? Of course, <laughs> a constantly supercharged uterus yes. is not without its drawbacks. After all, the chicken essentially goes through its entire menstrual cycle every day. So next time your really? girlfriend's complaining about how bad her period is, get her a box of chocolates and be generally attentive to her needs. Oh, jeez. You prick. Anyway, oh, one thing... <laughs> Now, anything with that kind of menstrual cycle, um, 
Because one of the things that makes a domesticated animal worthy of being domesticated is the ability for it to reproduce quickly, right? It's why, for example, you know, among multiple reasons, why an elephant, which could be, you know, an amazing domesticated animal is not very good because it has um, uh, uh, just uh, uh, has a, um, it takes, you know, their, their pregnancies, for example, they take way longer than a human's. What is it like 20 months or something? Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's way longer. And the fact that they mature very slowly. So an animal is, uh, uh, is most productive, of course, if you can tame it and stuff, but it has a um, short pregnancies and can start giving birth within months or maybe a year or so of their of their existence and it looks like china uh, the chickens coming out that came out of china here are perfect for that thing with chickens and most other egg laying critters is that they only have one hole in their pelvic region which is called a cloaca i think or the butt cloaca cloaca so the croatia basically acts like a funnel <coughs> taking all Excuse the me. eggs and waste and sending it down the same chute and while this might sound convenient at first there is one fatal disadvantage that affects chickens in particular sometimes the egg can get stuck on its way out leading to a condition known as egg binding and since this means nothing can exit the clamato anymore the egg bound chicken ends up dying of constipation over the course of a couple days so this the way <laughs> The way they've developed it, 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 it looks like the chicken, it has to have humans to tend it because they're going to have to um, be able to, to remedy this. Hey, Jerry, how you doing? <sighs> Not good, Sean. Not good. Oh, man, what's wrong? It's just ever since Jenny got egg bound, things have been so stressful. Her funeral expenses are through the roof, and her memory means so much to me. But if the bills keep coming in like this, I'm not sure my family will be able to handle it. Well, hey, man, you know what they this say. This is too serious. Don't put all your eggs in one casket. Let's just hope she doesn't get egg-zoomed. I'm sorry. Don't ever contact me or my kids ever again. I understand. Anyway, that's all for today. Till next time. Well done, Sam. Nella, and thank you for watching. All right, let's talk about it. All right, so that's the story of the domestication of the chicken. That's great. I I find the the, the early histories of plants and animals and how they kind of came to be a really fascinating thing because nothing we eat, both plant and animal based, is in in its current form is anything like it was in its original form. Right? It took thousands of years of human experimentation to get plants and animals to be. The productive things that they are today. I mean, again, look at look at the animals that we eat. Um, they, I mean, you look at them. They're they're not animals that could survive in the wild and didn't look like that. They wouldn't have been able to. Like a cow would, you know, a chicken. Those things would never survive in the wild. Um, and then again, the plants we eat too. A lot of them just started as like weeds, and then through cultivation and the better seeds become more nutritious and larger yields and all that. But it's hard to know the history of these things because so much of this happened before recorded history. Meaning, you know, the first person to domesticate the chicken didn't write it down, their, their process. Uh, but something we have to look. I mean, I don't know, honestly, how they how they know exactly about these things. Uh, but it's interesting to know. I just need to learn more about it. So, But I do find it fascinating because it's an integral part of the human history um, is the domestication of plants and animals. I mean, it's what changed humans into what we are now. I mean, you look at population growth and technological growth through the history of, of humankind. I mean, it goes on, you know, thousands of years, hundreds of thousands of years, millions, if you want to get back. And then it just skyrockets completely with technological and agricultural adv uh, advancements. Population growth happens pretty much at that point when plants and animals became domesticated. You look at a population chart just explodes once that, once that happens. And it's an interesting part of history. And I think it's, it's uh, hopefully we can study it more because again, it is fascinating. All right, with that, awesome job of Sam. Good, funny stuff there. Thanks patrons for picking this. Um, and uh, again, make sure you support Sam. The link is down below to this original video. Support that. Let's get him back here on the internet. All right, with that, we'll see you next time. Bye.